Yes. Yes. Thank you. So today I'll be presenting the work I uh, did at HP uh, and I'm doing at HP. So knowledge and uh, knowledge graph empowered explainable recommendation for AI pipeline. The vision version of this article was uh, published in IEEE Internet Computing recently. So let me go. Uh, Revati, sorry. Sorry to interrupt you. I think we are seeing the presenter note screen and not oh. the presentation view. Uh, so yeah, the I'll I'll be presenting the work I'm doing at HP uh, Knowledge Graph Empowered Explainable Recommendation for AI Pipelines. Uh, the vision version of this article was recently published in IEEE Internet Computing. So let me go over it. Uh, what are AI pipelines? Uh, so we run various models uh, for various tasks. So anything that involves from the selection of a data set uh, to deploying the model, whatever the components we have inside and the parameters that go within it is completely called an AI pipeline. So right from uh, a choice of a data set for a particular task to what are the list of pre-processing techniques we need, what is the choice of model I want to execute and test the model, what are the evaluation metrics and what are the parameters that I need to consider that so that which of the models I can choose to go ahead and deploy. But now why do we need a recommender for an AI pipeline? So to give you an example, the simple task of image classification uh, needs at the bare minimum needs this many, these many decisions to be made. So the combination of possible data augmentations, uh, these are the list of possible image classification models we have at hand as of, uh, as of now. And we also have a list of possible optimizers to choose from. And besides the learning rate for each of these optimizers, we also have a list of uh, parameters which are specific to the optimizers as well. And on top of this, we have, uh, we can think about the regularization techniques and normalization, uh, normalization techniques as well. It will be costly in terms of time and GPU resources to test the combination of all of these parameters here. So how do we choose an optimal set of parameters uh, so that we can choose a model and the right set of hyperparameters to run a given task? Or how do we even make a choice of the data set? So wouldn't it be helpful if there is a recommender that aids us in identifying the sweet spot, if not the optimal solution or uh, what has worked before? So we propose a solution here. We propose a knowledge enabled recommender framework that applies prior knowledge on the metadata collected from these AI pipelines to recommend, uh, to recommend the network architecture, which is the model architecture and hyperparameters to optimize the pipeline for a given task and a data set. So this is the overall uh, architecture of the knowledge enabled recommender. Uh, I know there are a lot of components here, but we will break it down uh, as, I, as we go through the presentation. So the overview here is that when the user can give an input query in a natural language that we intend to compute, uh, convert to an input configuration, and the output will be uh, a list of pipelines, uh, metadata pipelines, with explanation for the recommendation. Because here, our recommender is a white box model, which uses the knowledge graph constructed from this metadata of the pipelines. So, uh, yeah, the what about the natural language query that is given by the user, for example, I want to know the list of pipelines for image classification that is executed using a convolutional neural network, because I don't want to go for transformers and convolutional neural networks are lightweight models. So these queries will be trans uh, transformed into a simple JSON format or key value pairs that will be given to the recommender and the output will be the list of pipelines with uh, a list of pipelines uh, with explanation because we can explain why we chose what, why we recommend what we recommend. So the two core components of the recommender are, is the metadata knowledge graph and the other one is the semantic knowledge graph. So we'll go over these components as we go by, but let's stick to the fact that these two are the two major core components of the, of the recommender. So the first thing is to construct the metadata knowledge graph. 
we need the AI pipeline metadata. So what is an AI pipeline metadata? So whatever, uh, when we execute an AI pipeline, all the information, the components of the pipeline, the parameters of the pipeline, that, that is called the uh, metadata of AI pipeline. Now we need a way to record it. There are various uh, pipeline uh, metadata frameworks which are out there. But HP has their own uh, common metadata framework, which will uh, record the uh, pipeline metadata. So what is different from uh, this common metadata framework compared to other metadata frameworks is that this is basically a pipeline centric approach uh, where right from choosing the data set to deploying, everything is contained within the pipeline. And uh, the structure is in such a way that it is centered around uh, the entire pipeline. And they have their own APIs as well. So I'm ed to also give a tutorial on common metadata frameworks to our lab so that people can use it. And it's an open yeah. Linux foundation project now uh, so that whatever the feedback that we are giving will also uh, can be registered as well. Uh, so using common metadata framework, currently we are recording the metadata of some pipelines. Uh, we, I think, have about 50 to 60 pipelines recorded so far. Uh, but why do we have just 50 to 60? Because again, AI pipelines are, it takes time to train and record the metadata of the AI pipelines. So for our recommender, we need quite extensive uh, metadata from various pipelines to be able to go and search and recommend what is the closest pipeline to what the user has requested. Uh, but in order to do that, it is going to take a lot of time. While CMF has the potential to record the metadata of the AI pipelines, we went in search of uh, open sources which can give us these pipelines as well. Does any of the open sources already have the pipelines recorded? And we came across these four sources as of now, Papers with Code, OpenML, uh, Kaggle, and Hugging Face. So in Papers with Code, we they provide details such as what is the data set used in the pipeline, task, uh, method, result, and evaluation through their APIs itself. Uh, the hyperparameter is not explicitly available through the API, but Papers with Code has linked to the paper. So we can go ahead and fetch that information from the paper. And they also provide uh, the code to their respective GitHub repo as well. That's why it's papers with code. And OpenML also has, uh, has their information open sourced. So OpenML also has a framework to record uh, the metadata of the pipeline, but it is a model centric approach. Rifti? And most, uh, as Dr. Bikla. Uh, Rifti, if I can ask you one quick question. Mm -hmm. What is uh, recording a pipeline mean? I, I, so there is a pipeline, which is the series of steps through which uh, your mm -hmm. uh, uh, data is going through and the training is happening and testing or whatever, right? And then right. you are deploying it. Right. So what is why why to record it? Uh, is it uh, like uh, for reproducibility or what exactly is a pipe uh, recording a pipeline? So recording a pipeline means, uh, there are two ways of course. One is we are trying to automatically record it. So when the user uh, gives, okay, this is my data set, we go ahead and fetch what is the name of the data set and, and so on. So currently recording a pipeline, meaning uh, we ask the user to tell us what is the data set they are using? What is the model they are using? What is the task that they are performing? And what are the hyperparameters of the model that they are setting it to? So when these information can be collected, let's say that I have uh, thousands and thousands of AI pipeline metadata recorded for the pipelines which are already executed, where the user has given the input and I have collected the metadata in a nicely structured format. So now I have another user coming in and asking that um, I want to perform an image classification on an ImageNet data set. What would be the good model to start with? What would be the good hyperparameter to start with? So I have the list of AI, uh, the pipeline metadata recorded. So I can go and uh, go and fetch the information from my data store and give it to the other user who's requesting me, saying that, oh, you can probably start with uh, a ResNet, which is the most common model. And for ImageNet, it has achieved this much accuracy. And uh, you can start with a learning rate of so-and-so for this many number of epochs. And there you go. Like, you can start with this. This will be a good starting point. So we want to recommend uh, a pipeline to the user and complete AI pipeline to the user for 
uh, whatever request that they are uh, producing. Okay, I'll just stop with one comment, which is mm -hmm. that uh, pipeline here seems like a very much like a workflow, and there's a lot mm -hmm. of work on workflow recommendation and plan recommendation and so mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. uh, and in fact, there is a whole body of work. Uh, you may want to check out CoScriptor, which was something okay. uh, very, um, uh, very influential. Uh, where you could uh, say on the Google, right, uh, this is the mm -hmm. way I searched for something like a White House, and mm -hmm. I shared that script to someone else, and then they could also just replay it, right? So okay. on a web scale, they could just replay, and so you could discover all the metadata and inter process dependency and so on. So it's like Got a it. web scale okay. workflows. And uh, so please continue, but I'm just saying that mm -hmm. there might be a lot, lot of rediscovery of the terms from workflow. That's all. Thanks. Got it, got it. Thank you. I'll definitely browse along those slides. Uh, Thank you. Revati, I have uh, one thing to add. I don't know if I've understood correctly, but last year, for example, I interned with a, a not intern, interviewed with a company called ServiceNow. Yeah, uh, yeah. That was into this kind of thing. Uh, so I'm just curious. Uh, this is also a question for Dr. Srivastava is if that if some of these uh, tools have been around for so long, why is it on the um, top of pri the priority list for a lot of these service companies? And, and why aren't they using those existing tools and trying to hire, um, you know, um, advanced PhD students to automate their machine learning workflow pipeline? Well, I can tell you about the PhDs. I can tell you about the PhDs. <laughs> And we need to create new hype. And uh, this is already there in a, a utility called Unix. Okay. On implementing workflows, do it using Unix shell. Your voice is breaking so badly that it is not legible. Sorry, we couldn't hear you. The voice was not coming through. You got to mic in your room. It's not going to work. So, um, let me, let me, I'll, I'll but, uh, Sorry, Dr. Bruklo, we somehow still couldn't hear you properly. It, it's okay. We can, uh, since we are both at the Institute, we can talk about it afterwards. No, no, sorry. I'll, I'll okay. Um, we, we need a better organization. But So in order to record the metadata of the AI pipelines, we have to recreate and rerun a lot of them. Um, but that will again take a lot of time and GPU resources, and it will be uh, it, it will be a long time before we can have sufficient number of pipelines recorded. So we looked at the open sources which can give us the metadata of the AI pipelines, which has been run by other users or which has been recorded before. Uh, generally, papers are a good source uh, overall. When we go and fetch the information from the paper that usually has uh, what is the pipeline, what is the task being executed in this paper, what are the models used, hyperparameter settings, and, and so on. So these four are the data sets, uh, sorry, the open sources that we came across. And now we are uh, fetching information from these open sources to collect the metadata of the already recorded AI pipelines. But the challenge here is each of these open sources come up with uh, has their own nomen uh, nomenclature and has their own data structure. Uh, uh, for example, if you take a look at the third row here, what is the item of interest for me, which is called model? What is the name of the model used in the pipeline? It's called method in papers with code and it's called flow in open ML. And uh, in Kaggle, we do have models, but in hugging, uh, yeah, in Kaggle and hugging face, we do have models, but some of, the, some of the models in Kaggle are not very explicitly available. They are more centered around data, uh, data sets. So how do we unify them? And for that, we proposed a metadata ontology because we have various information coming in from various sources in various in different formats. So we want to fetch those information and bring it under one common roof so that I don't have to use different query language or different query structure for uh, each of these, when I'm querying the information from each of these sources. So this metadata ontology is built upon uh, what is already called an ML schema ontology. Uh, their, uh, their ontology was developed long, long ago. So it's more suited for machine learning tasks and does not include information for 
uh, recording deep learning tasks, explicit information for deep learning tasks. So uh, we constructed uh, ontology, uh, which is on top of ML, uh, ML schema ontology with uh, improvements as needed for our work. So now coming back to the recommender, uh, we filled in, uh, so now we know the metadata knowledge graph and how we are planning to construct it or what, what is the pro how we are constructing it. And we have on the right side called semantic knowledge graph and what is the information that goes into that. So now I have all the pipelines ready. How do I identify what is the most similar pipeline to what the user has requested? So let's take an example scenario here. Uh, in scenario one, the user is requesting an image classification task with the data set ImageNet. And this is a very common uh, pipeline. So I go check my data store, uh, check for a match for the uh, task image classification and the data set ImageNet, I'm obviously going to find it. So I'm going to fetch the pipeline, all the pipelines that the user has requested and give it to the user. If needed, I'll ask more information from the user to narrow down the pipelines further and give it to the user. But let's take a scenario two where the user is requesting for video instance segmentation using a data set called Davis. And I do not have this particular, uh, this particular task in my, uh, in my data store. There are no pipelines executed for video instance segmentation. In that case, what happens? So I have to go and find the pipelines which executed a task which is similar to video instance segmentation. Um, but how do we do that? How do I find a similar task to what the user has given? So one obvious approach would be the embedding based approach or a string matching approach. But when we experimented with these two, these two do not capture two important uh, features, which is the task categories and uh, task modalities. So what is a task category? If we take a look at the graph here, task category, we obviously want two segmentation tasks to be closer compared to a classification task. And uh, when we take into the task modality, modality is nothing but what is the modality of the data set for which the task is being performed. So we want the image-based tasks to be closer in the late, uh, closer compared to the text-based task. So here to compute a task similarity, we are implementing, uh, so we are considering four features. One is the string matching itself, which is a token matching and the embedding of the uh, respective the embedding similarity of any two given tasks and the task categories and the task modalities if present. And we are computing the task category and task modality by curating our own vocabulary. So once we identify a similar task with the threshold given by the user, so for example, the user says, I only care about the pipelines, which has a similarity of 0.5 and above. So I'm going to fetch all the tasks, which has a score of 0.5 and above and the pipelines executed for that. And the next is the user has asked for Davis data set. So now I'll go and check my store if it has the Davis data set, but if it doesn't have, I have to compute data set similarity as well. So since Davis data set is not a very familiar data set, I'm going to show an example here with ImageNet and MS Coco, how are we planning to calculate a data set similarity? So we have, um, we, we are coming up with two sets of computed properties. One is the semantic, uh, sorry, semantic properties and statistical properties. The statistical properties are how many number of classes in the data set, what are the number of images per class, uh, what is the color space of the images and image size, things of these sort. For semantic properties, uh, one example that we started with right now is this. What is the data set representative of? So when we, when, I, when we take an image and it has a good mix of classes, which is representative of animals, vehicles, and flowers. But whereas when we go to flowers 102 data set, it, it is only representative of flowers. So if the user is asking uh, for a image classification pipeline, which is about food, I do not want to uh, give them a pipeline which is executed for a flowers. So here we can see that from the semantic similarity, we can uh, find out that the ImageNet is much, sorry, the MS Coco is much closer to ImageNet compared to Flowers 102. So this is how we are planning to calculate the, uh, we are proposing to calculate the data set similarity. So the task similarity is achieved and we are in the process of computing these properties for the data set similarity. And now, there are parts of this uh, recommender which are executed. Uh, so the one aspect, the semantic KG that we talked about, which is in the rightmost corner, 
uh, we are planning to compute the similarities for various, various instances of this metadata entities. And we have completed for tasks and we are moving towards other entities such as uh, data set models, uh, evaluation metrics and, and so on. So now coming back to the metadata KG, where are we on that? So we have, uh, I can go ahead and show the demo of this particular uh, uh, metadata KG that we have at hand. So we have completed for completed the pipeline for one source, uh, papers with code. We have converted that to the corresponding graph data model, populated the graph and converted that to the knowledge graph based on the metadata ontology we proposed. So uh, how, okay, actually I can just go ahead and show the demo currently since we are also running short of time. Uh, actually, there might be one question which the users might have. So when we take the papers with code, this is the RDBMS format of the data that they are giving and we are converting that into the graph data model. So this is the graph data model of the papers with code. Now someone might, I mean, obviously there would be a question. So you already have a graph here from the format that they are giving. Why don't you just go and query this graph? So two main reasons is that this is the graph data model of one source, which is papers with code. And this is the other graph data model of other source, which is the common metadata framework. You can obviously see that the graph data models here are very different for each of the sources, one thing. And the second thing is we have to structure the query in such a way that uh, which, which will be suitable for each of the models. We have to keep remembering what is the underlying relationship and the entity, uh, entity relationships. And they also do not have some of the properties which we need. So we are also computing those properties uh, as we want as we want to perform the queries. So for example, here, uh, yeah. So for example, here, we will be able to perform a query such as models used for text classification because we have this computed property called category and modality, which is not present in the, which is not present in the existing existing information given out by these various resources. So let me quickly show the demo. Um, I have already executed some queries here and kept it ready. Uh, I won't be able to probably go for more, probably a couple more queries because it takes time for the browser to load. And I have loaded about only 15% of the data set just from papers with code. We have about 1.1 million nodes in total. And the relationship between them, it's probably somewhere around uh, somewhere around 3 million, 3 million to 4 million, if I remember it right. And this is just from one source. And OpenML has about 10 million nodes in them. And Kaggle and uh, Hugging, Hugging Face, we haven't even estimated the numbers. So the knowledge graph that we will be having here will be huge. So I have loaded a part of the data set to show the demo. So here, uh, this particular graph is showing what are the evaluations performed on the MNIST data set and what are the results of each of the evaluations. So this is the MNIST data set and these are the list of evaluations that are being performed, the gray nodes and uh, the, the, um, sorry, the green color nodes are the results of each of the evaluations. So I can go and fetch the pipelines for each of this evaluation. The user can simply query this or give us the input and we will go ahead and query for them. And we can ask them to tell me, tell us that, okay, fetch which result do you want from here? The user can fetch the result and we can go ahead and identify the corresponding pipeline and give it to the user. So one other query is, um, yeah. So the other query is, um, this is the same, okay. So what are the data sets used for uh, text recognition? This will obviously be uh, producing much more results than what we see here because I have loaded only part of the data set for the demo purpose. So uh, these are the list of tasks uh, which are, comes under text recognition and these are the list of data sets used. Uh, again, we can go ahead and fetch what are the results of these data sets. So we can choose whatever pipeline we want. So this is the demo of the metadata knowledge graph that we have at hand. And we can also go ahead and uh, get information based on uh, frameworks as well. So here, I'm sorry, my browser is struggling a bit. Sorry, I think I closed that. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. So what are the list of pipelines uh, executed using the PyTorch framework? Oops, sorry, I think my browser is stuck. 
Okay. Let me go back to the presentation. I kind of guessed this might happen. Uh, yeah. So uh, we can also keep performing such such semantically uh, meaningful queries, which would not be possible when if I'm going and performing these queries just from the graph data models given by each of these sources. And we did try to perform these queries from uh, based on the information given out, the raw information given out from each of these sources. And for all of these, we just got null values because these properties are not present. And uh, I'll also quickly show the demo of the recommender that we have, uh, which initially was recorded based on, uh, yeah. So this is the demo of the recommender. We do not have the UI built for this yet, and we are in the process of it. So this is all a work in progress. And this particular, uh, a recommender we have here. Uh, this was initially built based on the raw, sorry, this was uh, the back end of this is uh, the JSON files which are given by the APIs. And we are currently in the process of hooking the back end with the graph so that, so that the information can be stored efficiently and queried efficiently. But just to show that we also have the recommender, here I have queried for the task. Uh, sorry, here I have uh, not this. Okay, yeah. So the task, the query task name. Here I have queried for the task incident detection. So I'm asking my recommender to give uh, the pipelines executed for incident detection. But we do not have any of those uh, pipelines executed for incident detection. So it's, it's telling me that it's a new task, meaning that the task does not exist in my pipeline. So I'm going to go and find what are the neighbors or what are the closest matches of the incident detection. The user has set the number of pipelines to be recommended as three. So I'm just listing the three uh, recommended pipelines here. So incident detection is the query and uh, the top three results return are event detection and the paper is uh, objective evaluation metrics for automatic classification of EEG events. And the second best match was action detection and the third best match was traffic accident detection. So here for these papers, the papers with code is not directly giving us uh, the data sets and Git repos through their API. So we have to go and extract it from the papers, which is our future task. Uh, but meanwhile, we can still go ahead and fetch the information from the paper. What is the, where is the Git repo and what is the data set used, model used and, and so on. So this is to show that the recommender currently that we have can still identify a similar pipeline based on a task which will eventually be extended uh, to also identifying a pipeline based on a similar task and a similar data set as well. So coming back after executing all these queries, uh, since it's an SVG, again, it's taking time to render. So uh, coming, back to the, uh, coming back to the overall architecture of the recommender. So uh, the metadata KG, we have from, that we have constructed from uh, the information available through the API. So that for now, uh, we have the first version of that. We are working towards extracting information from the paper. So uh, papers, have, papers are long text documents with a lot of information. So we are building a parser and an extractor, which can fetch us information uh, from the papers, the, the information of interest, such as data set, task, model, hyperparameter, evaluation metrics, and results. And uh, we are also in the process of uh, getting the semantic KG up and running. So we have computed the, uh, we have come up with a metric to compute the similarity between any two tasks. And we are computing the properties for data set model and the other entities in the pipeline, uh, coming up with metrics to compute similarity between those tasks as well. And yeah, that concludes the presentation. Any questions, comments? I have one quick question, Rayati. Mm -hmm. uh, so, when you added, uh, uh, when you asked the query, uh, mm -hmm. you know, incidents. So, mm -hmm. how does it know where to add that node? Uh, so, so, how it does it? That, okay. It says that new node added, right? It's a yeah, yeah. task, so node added. How does it know where to add that node? So we have a separate graph called semantic KG. Uh, what that will consist of is a bunch of uh, notes just with the name of the uh, just with the task information. 
so it will add a node first put it into the graph and compute the similarity metric with the rest of the nodes in the graph and then establishes the connection if that makes sense so if i slightly change the query mm -hmm. uh, incident detection to let's say incident identification mm -hmm. would that still have the same uh, neighbors it may not because there uh, it may or may not i think we can go ahead and try it might take some time to compute uh, incident identification <laughs> so uh, I, I believe that this task may not also be present in the data store. So what it will do is I have, let's say that I have 3000 nodes, which interconnections between them. And each of the node has a, a property called task name and task category and modality. So you're giving me now a new, new node with a new task. So I'm going to take that node and compute the similarity metric with all the list of the nodes, which are, uh, which are present in my graph already. What, and then if, what similarity? Uh, similarity between the task, task names. Uh, uh, are you computing something like cosine or? Uh, no, so so I will be computing once again, I think this will take forever. So I'm computing similarity metric based on four components. Uh, one is the string matching of the name. So video instant segmentation and video, uh, sorry, video instant classification. So I have the common words here, video and video, instance and instance. So this is one feature. The other feature is, as you said, the cosine similarity uh, generated based on the embeddings of these two phrases. And the third is we have a list of vocabulary which will help me compute what is the task category of a given task, segmentation, classification, identification, recognition, and, and so on. And I also have a list of vocabulary, sorry, a vocabulary which will help me compute the task modalities as well. Uh, so in some cases, we may not be able to compute a task, uh, uh, a task modality. For example, incident <laughs> identification, it may be based on a signal, it may be based on from the images as well. So uh, for whatever information we have, we also compute the task modality. So bringing in all these four features together, we identify what is the most similar task based on uh, the similarity metric given out by taking into account these four features. So as you said, yeah, uh, embedding metric is also going, it's one of the four features. So for incident identification, again, that particular information, sorry, that particular task is not available in the, in the data store. So it goes and, um, it goes and computes a similarity metric with all the other tasks I have in my data store because all of these tasks have a pipeline associated with them. So for a given task, I'm going to identify what is the closest or the most similar task, identify the list of most similar tasks and fetch the pipelines executed for these tasks and return it to the user. So for incident identification, we did not have a great uh, score of, I think there's something wrong with the similarity metric I'm calculating, uh, but I have to go and check that. So for incident identification, I got protein folding, person identification and uh, the identification. So these as the results. It's not a perfect system. It's an improving system. We are constantly improving it. It's the very first version of the recommender we have at hand. I think uh, there should be something like uh... So when you add the, you know, query, right? So the incident identification or incident uh, detection, something like that, mm -hmm. some sort of a normalization uh, before passing uh, it to the, uh, you know, node creation and the uh, task was, you know, similarity computation. Because uh, could you please two, explain the normalization part? So of these that? two, these two queries uh, look alike, right? For a for a human. So if I'm doing, uh, let's say, literature search on Google uh, Scholar. Mm -hmm. uh, so I want to find the, all the papers related to, you know, incident, incident identification. So I mm -hmm. might do, uh, you know, queries, uh, both with incident identification and incident detection, something like that. But I would mean the same thing. Oh, got it. Got some, it. some sort of a normalization has to be there before creating and going ahead and creating uh, these nodes. Okay. Because okay. see, protein folding and de-identification, de so actually, the results that you got before are much more 
uh, relevant mm. than this one. True, true, makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. Thank you. Uh, Thanks. Thank you. Uh, any other? So there are a couple of uh, questions. Yes, Dr. Bhattar. Yeah, there are a couple of questions. Um, one was I was uh, supposed to respond to Kaushik's uh, question, and then uh, uh, Vishal had one in the chat. Okay, so to your Kaushik's uh, question, now you can hear me, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. I can hear. You. So, um, why the companies are not adopting, or they have not adopted, right? It is typically a matter of changing uh, uh, abstraction. So the abstraction has been there. So I, I am sure I, I put a paper about uh, on the Unix uh, uh, actual um, a command line, right? You can actually do automation of various kinds, including Puppet is the framework which is out there. So companies and services companies have done it at that level. Mm -hmm. At web scale, when you're talking about IT uh, infrastructures, right? APIs and so on. Again, they have done it. The uh, co-scripted, the example which I was giving you is another example, okay? Why one of these has not become uh, big, okay? The reason has to do not with the technical, but it is a business. You want big hypes so that you can get more investment, okay? So, uh, so that is the uh, from the business side of things, right? Why some things are picking up? Why is, is I'm just uh, taking an analogy, why is chat GPT only picking up now? Why not before, right? Dialogue systems have been there for 60 years, okay? So, and the LLMs have been there since 50 years, okay? The first papers on LLM have been on 50 years. So the question about why now is a is a, a, a totally different question. Now on a technical level, what are the PhDs doing and what are they doing here, right? It's a very fair question. Meaning that if it is about workflow and workflow recommender, why should the metadata be so big? Okay, uh, the knowledge graph is so big. Why should every workflow be there, right? You have a pipeline, okay? About uh, 13 years back, we talked about workflow summaries. If there are millions of these, all you need to know are a few typical pipeline templates, right? By which, which are relevant to you. No one is going to look at millions of pipelines. Mm -hmm. It's good to see, but very practically uh, not usable, right? So the PhDs, the question for them, of course, is what mm -hmm. specific narrow thing that they're picking up and where they can ev evaluate and all that, right? And go at the different, across uh, different time frames, whatever the automation has been allowed. But I, I really like the pipeline recommendation, right? But what I'm trying to say is that what is new in this problem formulation from previous formulation, that is definitely something to be uh, looked at. Okay, I hope I answered the question. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Vishal had a question. I may, uh, you know, add something to Biplav's question. Uh, I believe the reason <clears throat> why do you need recommender because number of publication and number of experiment has increased dramatically since the last five years. So look at AAAI this time they presented, they have received around 10,000 papers and look at any other conference, ACLE, MNLP, each guy, all are receiving in the, in the number of 10,000. At least five years back, the number of receiving paper was around 1,200, 1,300. So, you know, the available models and papers and experiment are huge. So it's, you know, slowly becoming impossible for any researcher, practitioner to find out what works for me. Maybe that's the reason. I mean, just one addition. Thank you, Dr. Das. And uh, to uh, answer Vishal's question, so the auto ML approaches, they'll help you record the pipeline, but they are not still into a uh, recommendation aspect of it. Uh, so there is one other work called neural architecture search by Google uh, Vertex, uh, Vertex NAS, if I remember it right. So they trained the deep learning model to recommend a deep learning model basically. So the, in their case, the deep learning models are being recommended, but they are not into hyperparameters yet. But the thing is, that is a black box model. The one thing uh, which HP was very clear about since the beginning was that uh, they are majorly focused on the trustworthy AI techniques. So they don't want to train a deep learning model to recommend a deep learning model. 
they want to tell the user why we think this this particular pipeline is similar to what uh, we are recommending and vishal i hope that answered the question uh, please let me know yep that answers the question thank you so much revati thank you okay let's move on to the next 